rotation reflections activity using paper. I've stuck the paper down in the two corners with blue tack so it doesn't move when I put the tracing paper over the top. I've traced around the shape, my original object. I've put in two lines that I want to be the mirror lines, one vertical, one horizontal. I'm going to reflect first in one, the vertical, then roughly in the horizontal. And this last shape where it ends up, is there a single rotation that gets me from there to the final second reflection? That's the task. I find it helps using blue tack because it can be a bit fiddly. It's not essential, but it's helpful. So I'm going to put two bits of blue tack along the reflection line. Tracing paper over the top. Line up the shapes that's as covered as well as possible. And then stick down to the blue tack. Nails are helpful for that. Fingernails. Put a ruler along the reflection line and fold. Ruler out the way, make that fold nice and tight. And we can see where the reflection in the vertical line has gone. Pencil underneath, mark the corner points. So I'm just going to slide my pencil underneath and I can see where each of those points should be. I can see through the tracing paper. When they've marked, draw in the shape, that's the image. And now it's the image we're going to reflect. Remove the blue tack so it's not in our way. Not the original object. So we're going to take this image and we're going to reflect that in the horizontal line. So again, blue tack along the horizontal line, which is going to be our mirror. I don't need to draw the shape out again, I've already got it. Line it up so it fits more or less perfectly over the top. Stick it down to the blue tack, press your fingernails in, helps to really keep it in place. Ruler along the mirror line, fold over. Ruler out the way, really crease that down to finish it off and make sure it's along the mirror line. Great, now we can see where that second image ends up. Lift up the paper, mark each of the corners like we did before. And then it's just join the dots. That's our second image. Let's call that shape B, that one C. And the task is, how do I get from A to C? Can I, using a single rotation? So there were two reflections in vertical and horizontal lines. Later, second task will be to choose diagonal lines. So rotations, I place my image, my tracing right over the object as well as I can. And I'm gonna stab my pencil in. And where I stab my pencil, that'll be the center of rotation. I'm gonna try here. And that point just doesn't move. So as I turn, the paper, I'm rotating it, then that's where my image, the, the pencil line, ends up. And you see it's quite close to the object. If you choose a center of rotation that's further away, imagine I chose 0, 0, and I chose 0, 0, that means they're the coordinates, x, 0, y, 0, see the origin. And if I rotate that round, you can see it goes quite a lot further away. There's my image right over there as I spin that around. So that's the effective center of rotation. And then angles, let's choose another center again. There's a vertical crease, or we can see this horizontal crease here, let's use that. When it goes to a vertical crease, that means I must have turned 90 degrees. When it comes back horizontal again, I must have turned 180. And when that crease ends up back at the vertical, it's 270. And then at horizontal where we started off, that must be 360 all the way around. Rotation. For some of these, you might find it's not multiples of 90 degrees, the rotation. Often you'll find that, maybe. So I'm going to use this as my center of rotation. And I would give that a coordinate, 2 on the x-axis, 2 on the y-axis. So how do we do it if it's not 90 degrees? Well, if I just rotate that, I don't know what to about here. Going to lift up the corners each time, maybe that was a perfect place. Mark the points. Going to join up those dots. Okay, and let's call this shape D. How would I work out what the angle of rotation is there? Well, this point here, let's call that point P, is the same as center of rotation rotate this point on that rotated shape so I'm going to call that P dash you'll often see P dash P double dash so I need to draw from my center to that point a straight line let's take a red so we can really see that 
And then I'm going to do the same to the new point, P dash, another red line. And then I'd need a protractor to measure that angle, which would be the angle of rotation center 2, 2. And that's how you do rotations that aren't multiples of 90. So recap, reflect it twice, and then can you find a rotation and the center rotation that would get that shape back onto the second reflection? Over to you.